Today I'm going to be talking about and reviewing a Tyco Run 12 volt 100 watt pure sine wave inverter. This one will actually do 2200 watt peak. So we're going to talk about the general features of the device. We're going to test and see how close it gets to those numbers. Then I'm going to talk about the best application and some concerns with these type of inverters. So hang out. Let's have some fun. So before we hook this up and test it, let's just go over what came in the box. As you can see, it came in a nicely packed box. It is a nice looking unit. Weight and size are about average for a, a small 100 watt um, inverter. Um, it came with this remote. Um, if does not come with batteries, so if you're gonna use this remote, you're gonna need A23 batteries. Does not come with these. Uh, came with these little teeny wires. Uh, I don't know what gauge they are, but I can only guess that they're uh, teeny <laughs> wires. I'm going to use these on their test because that's what they came with. Um, came with the tops for when you hook up the batteries in the back. And then um, looks like some sort of grounding strap. Uh, real quick, um, we're going to go over the key features. This is the boring stuff. We'll get into the fun stuff in a second. Uh, has a USB port. Uh, wireless remote ultra silent cooling system which we'll test and see how quiet it actually is um, talks about the surge rating um, easy to read lcd which we'll look at in a second of course it's 12 volt lightweight robust design which we already talked about it's a cool looking little little guy um, integrated safety features which we will test to make sure it stops when it gets too much or too little um, so, I don't know. That's about it. Let's hook this thing up and see what it can do. All right, let's hook this guy up now and see what kind of trouble we can get into. Got my 12-volt battery here. I'm going to use their wires. I noticed that these wires are really, really thin, so I'm actually going to have to add a washer to, to it. Um, I do not like that, but I am going to use their wires. Uh, normally, I would not do that, but that's what it came with, so that's what I'm going to do. So on this end, let's see how tight this guy is. I'm not a huge fan of this, but these little inverters are always like this. Even more expensive inverters are going to have these little twist things. Uh, there's plenty of reason not to like these, but that's what they have, so so be it. All right, so here comes the negative. Of course, there you go. You can see it needs this washer. Again, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, another thing, um, if you are tired of that little spark when you hook up inverters, you can hook up one of these guys and then do this for a few seconds, and this will minimize your sparking. Uh, that spark always freaks me out, so I just started to do this, and that usually will help minimize the spark. Okay, so we've got our battery hooked up. Let's turn this guy on. You can see there's a fan. Uh, let's turn it around and turn it on. All right, we have power. So um, you see the LED comes on. Um, there's the battery voltage. Of course, you can see there's the output. There's no output. 60 hertz. It's all pretty standard stuff. So first test is going to be this shop vac. It's a standard five horsepower rigid shop vac. Uh, I don't know how much you can see in this um, in the kilowatt, but um, if you can't, I will just tell you what it says. But let's see if it actually works. <laughs> First test, very impressive. It was about a thousand watts, sometimes a little bit over on both the kilowatt and on the indicator here on their LCD screen. Uh, it did that fine. Um, 
pushed a thousand watts. So um, out of the gate, pretty good. Actually, before I do more power tools, I'm gonna do a smaller shot back. This is a three horsepower Peak Stealth brand, which I think is a Harbor Freight. Let's see what it does here. Bounce between basically 700 watts on uh, both displays, uh, plus or minus a little bit. Um, not bad. Now, let's try some power tools. So next up is a little Harbor Freight angle grinder. Let's see what this does. Not bad. Said about 270 uh, watts coming through. Um, worked pretty good on that. Let's try something else. All right, so next up is a reciprocating saw. Yeah, not bad. Bounce between 420 and 450 or so between the two. Not bad. No problem so far. All right, now we're going to torture it. This one's going to be a little bit harder to film because I'm going to run my chop saw on it. So just give me a second to run over and turn that on and we'll see if it can actually do that. I doubt that it's going to do that because that's a pretty big chop saw. Yeah, that's what I thought. It can't even turn it on. But that's fine. Um, we're at torture test level now. Uh, I'm going to now hook it up to a space heater and see what we can get. So that chop saw was pretty big. I didn't think I was going to be able to pull that one off. But let's see if it does a space heater. Uh, 600, 900, 1500, I think. So it should be able to easily do the first setting. So this one's quiet, so now you can hear how loud the fan is. Once you put a load on it, it kind of kicks up a ruckus. All right, let's see if we can do two. So it's actually 800 and change. This is showing 827. This is showing 840, so pretty close. So I can run that. Um, I'm going to bump it up to the next notch, which is 1500, and I know it's going to fail, but I want to see what it does. Well, it did uh, a little bit better than I thought it would do, actually. So, not bad. I mean, we ran it through some tests. Uh, performance is pretty good. This little guy did better than I thought it was going to do. It failed where I thought it was going to fail. I knew it wasn't going to be able to do my chop saw. I was impressed that it was able to run a thousand watt load. Um, I could always test it longer and see if it can do for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I just wanted to see if it could hit those numbers real quick. Uh, and that brings me to my next point is what is the best application for these things and what is the limitations? This inverter, Tyco Run inverter, is probably as good as any of these $90, $100, inexpensive Chinese high-frequency inverters. 
the mechanics inside, the electronics inside um, are limited. And there are probably people out there in the comment section that can explain the insides better than I can. But in layman's turn, basically, these have limitations. That's why when you talk about things like idle consumption or efficiency on these, it doesn't matter. You're not going to use these things in a long-term scenario. What they're good for is short-term temporary usage. So for example, you take a battery, you take this, you take a charge controller, a solar panel, you create yourself a small DIY solar generator that you, you can use temporarily to power things, a TV, radio, um, internet router. Uh, you can see that it can run power tools. So if you needed to momentarily use a power tool to cut something or to drill something or to you know grind something momentarily, a minute or so, it can do those things. But these are not long-term. These are for short-term use. If you go into it with that mindset, I think you'll be fine. Uh, so that's my review. Uh, let me know what you think. If you've used this device, if you've used other things like this, I'd love to hear your information, especially, especially if you're an electronics engineer and you know the electronics inside. I'm sure our viewers are going to want to know a little bit more about that. But it's a, it's a decent inverter. It did better than I thought. Would I buy it? I mean, I don't really have a need for it. I already have several other inverters, but if I wanted to make a small DIY kind of Harbor Freight level uh, you know, project, um, this is as good as any. Um, all right, there you go. Thanks again. If you like this, like, share, subscribe, and again, leave a comment. Love to hear your input, and I will see you next time.